Good morning, and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan Brinza, and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording the service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion, passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penance and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for the holy baptism. There's also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now pray before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. O oh God of love, you are the true son of the world, evermore risen and never going down. We pray you to shine in our hearts and drive away the darkness of sin and the mists of error. We pray that we may this day and all our lives long walk without stumbling in the way you have prepared for us, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Um, this morning, we'll read the story of Hagar again. Um, this time, we will read from Eugene Peterson's uh, The Bible and Contemporary Language, The Message. Um, so that we hear the story in a, a different phrasing, a different way than the NSRV. Uh, so um, kind of put yourself in a place where you can take this in, uh, where it will sit with what we heard yesterday from Rachel Held Evans's book, Mid, uh, Inspired, uh, and what we heard on Monday from uh, the NSRV version. Sari, Abram's wife, hadn't yet produced a child. She had an Egyptian maid named Hagar. Sari said to Abram, God has not seen fit to let me have a child. Sleep with my maid. Maybe I can get a family from her. Abram agreed to do what Sari said. So Sari, Abram's wife, 
took her Egyptian maid Hagar and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife. Abram had been living 10 years in Canaan when this took place. He slept with Hagar and she got pregnant. When Hagar learned she was pregnant, she looked down on her mistress. Sarah told Abram, it's all your fault that I'm suffering this abuse. I put my maid in bed with you and the minute she knows she's pregnant, she treats me like I'm nothing. May God decide which of us is right. You decide, said Abram, your maid is your business. Sarai was abusive to Hagar, and Hagar ran away. An angel of God found her beside a spring in the desert. It was the spring on the road to Shur. He said, Hagar, maid of Sarai, what are you doing here? She said, I'm running away from Sarai, my mistress. The angel of God said, go back to your mistress, put up with her abuse. He continued, I'm going to give you a big family children past counting. From this pregnancy, you'll get a son. Name him Ishmael, for God heard you. God answered you. He'll be a bucking bronco of a man, a real fighter, fighting and being fought, always stirring up trouble, always at odds with his family. She answered God by name, praying to the God who spoke to her. You're the God who sees me. Yes, he saw me, and then I saw him. That's how that desert spring got its name. God alive sees me spring. That spring is still there between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar gave Abram a son. Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave him his son Ishmael. From Genesis 21. God visited Sarah exactly as he said he would. God did to Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and gave Abraham a son in his old age, and at the very time God had set. Abraham named him Isaac. When his son was eight days old, Abram circumcised him just as God had commanded. Abram was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has blessed me with laughter and all who get the news will laugh with me. She also said, whoever would have suggested to Abraham that Sarah would one day nurse a baby, yet here I am, I've given the old man a son. The baby grew and was weaned. Abram threw a big party on the day Isaac was weaned. One day Sarah saw the son that Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abram poking fun at her son Isaac. She told Abram, get rid of this slave woman and her son. No child of this slave is going to share inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter gave great pain to Abram. After all, Ishmael was his son. But God spoke to Abraham. Don't feel badly about the boy and your maid. Do whatever Sarah tells you. Your descendants will come through Isaac. Regarding your maid son, be assured that I'll also develop a great nation from him. He's your son too. Abraham got up early the next morning, got some food together and a canteen of water for Hagar, put them on her back and sent her away with the child. She wandered off into the desert of Beersheba. When the water was gone, she left the child under a shrub and went off 50 yards or so. She said, I can't watch my son die. As she sat, she broke into sobs. Meanwhile, God heard the boy crying. The angel of God called from heaven to Hagar, What's wrong, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy and knows the fix he's in. Up now, go get the boy, hold him tight. I'm going to make of him a great nation. Just then, God opened her eyes. She looked. She saw a well of water. She went to it and filled her canteen and gave the boy a long, cool drink. God was on the boy's side as he grew up. He lived out in the desert and became a skilled archer. He lived in the Paran wilderness, and his mother got him a wife from Egypt. So a long story. What, uh, what do you hear in this version that either seems uh, different to you uh, from what we've heard already or that uh, strikes you in a new way? Well. Two things. One thing that when Abram said, 
you decide she's your business. And when Sarah said, I've given the old man, not like she was a young woman, a son. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just thought, wow. And there's an insight to the family relationship. <laughs> I was struck when Sarah said, let God decide which one of us is right. Um, and God did decide, but maybe not in the way Sarah expected. You know, sometimes what God decides isn't really what we think is gonna happen. Either um, this, this reading was modern enough that it it just gave more detail but I, I do think that it gave more detail to the whole story than than our first um, than Monday's reading I mean I think it was a little easier to understand probably just the wordings and and I was also struck by you know she named God El Roy in the other story the God the God who sees and a lot of the vision was brought in, into this story. God opened her eyes. Um, there was a lot of the visual component in this story. I was kind of struck by how Peterson softens the uh, uh, state that Hagar is in. Uh, he, he labels her a maid instead of a slave. Um, I think that, that probably is less jarring to us, but maybe it shouldn't be. You know, maybe, maybe it needs to be jarring to us. The wording was a lot less cruder than the first reading. All still hard to imagine. I just, I just still don't think that either Abraham or Sarah come off well in this, this story. No, they don't. Agreed. I think Abraham's a wimp. I, don't, I mean. He's supposed to be the patriarch. Why didn't you just tell Sarah, hey, shut up. You know, they're fine. Let them work it out. <laughs> well, he seems to do what Sarah wants him to do, <laughs> what she wants him to do. So, well, I think time was running out, obviously. Yeah. And, and he also wanted to please God. I think he, he knew that he was supposed to be the the patriarch of a long lineage of peoples. And he probably was wondering how the heck he was gonna get that way. Yeah. Any other comments? It's an inspiration to me. I'm going to have another son in another 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on that, Robert. Good luck to Carol. <laughs> we're going to Carol's nice look. Yeah. That's going to require a lot of fervent prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll be your manager. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Loving God, in our faith, we pray for reconciliation between the violated and the violent. That, may we, that we may rest in your peace. For generosity between rich and poor people everywhere. That we may share the abundance of your creation. For the growth of love between broken peoples and nations that we may shape our common life as your kingdom. For mutual respect 
between immigrants and insiders. That we, we may welcome your image in all who come to us. For protection for the weak and humility for the strong. That we may serve others as you serve us in Christ. At this time, we can um, share intercessions and thanksgivings. For Fran, Kathy, and Pete. For the people of Ukraine. For Sandy. For all the joys and concerns of our hearts. That we may live with gladness and trust. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out our offenses. Renew a right spirit within me. Wash us through and through from our wickedness and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within me. For I know my transgressions and my sin are ever before me. Renew a right spirit within me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Renew a right spirit within me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. <laughs> 